Hello, welcome to Florian Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Hobby Boss's 148 scale AMX, which is the light attack aircraft out of the South America, out of Brazil and that. Lovely looking jet, very reminiscent of the Hawk uh, and everything else like that, quite updated. Quite, quite excited, saw the CAD work off of this uh, many months ago when it first started, you know, the rumor mill going off uh, and everything else like that and thought, yeah, I must admit, nice little aircraft, that one. So, usual thing uh, with the old Hobby Boss kits, uh, right the way through, very nice box art on the front as you can see. All right, and then looking around here, we've got the group. Nice to see a full uh, colour tail as well, it just makes this one come like uh, to it. A little bit about it, so as we know, it's a ground attack aircraft. Uh, it was built in 1997 by AMX International uh, for the uh, Italian, uh, sorry, Italian and Brazil, which is a joint venture. Uh, from the Air Forces. Very good. Okay, so your kit number for this one is 81741. Okay, and a little bit more in the back. Got nice decal sheets we can see, and a little bit of photo etch, which is sort of the norm these days. So, in the box, as I say, haven't looked in this box at all. Is that going to sit there? Oh, it is. Okay, so ah, instructions are on the top to entertain, and I can see some rubber tyres. Okay, so we will start in there. The usual blurb sheet on what's coming out. And actually it's got the uh, the AMX on the back here and some nice CAD work showing the different bits and pieces on there. So in here we have the usual hobby boss way of doing this. All right, so we've got the usual instructions. So sprue call outs right the way through, okay. Usual thing as you can imagine. So we're starting off into the cockpit area, putting all the bits and pieces in there. The seat doesn't look too bad, okay, and everything else. Side walls going in, number two down into the gear. Obviously I don't think you'd place that in there right now, okay. Main gear wells for both sides, lights, various bits and pieces. Again, it looks like they can all be fitted afterwards, which would be obviously the pro, um, preferred choice for us modelers. Okay, so gear going in, um, and then obviously nose wheel gear going in. Cockpit's obviously gonna sit on top of it. And then we've actually got the engine nozzle down the back. Weird the way they're putting this together, I must admit. So straightforward then, they're talking about putting the HUD in there. It looks like we've got some nice detailed work going into the HUD there. Sorry, around the HUD and around the actual uh, framing, rear view mirrors, various bits and pieces like that. Intakes going on, they're always going to be a troublesome area. Okay, and then very nice, we've got full detail control surfaces. So we've actually got the, um, I don't know what they call that bit, there you go, there's a thing I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, it's like an aileron, but it only pushes up on one wing, uh, various things. Uh, and then we've actually got leading edge slats on there. I presume these are vortex generators. Uh, and everything else like that. Uh, and then we've got flaps. Looks like they're deployable on the back as well, although it's not showing it in that one. Okay, yeah, perhaps they are just in the up position, but looking at that CAD work, it showed them being deployable, that's what I'm saying. So we've got them down here showing as being deployed, although it's not showing it on here, so I'm sure they can. Or let's say are just totally deployed and you can't have them in, which would be a nice touch. <laughs> okay, boarding ladders, again, all the lumps and bumps you're gonna put in afterwards. Tail on the top which leads me to believe there's probably different versions of this gonna be floating around. Usually that's the main reason why tails are separate. Wings going on, again, very old school way of putting this on where it's literally gonna be two butt joints. So this sandwich layer on this wing, you wanna make sure that's absolutely perfect before you put that in. Lots of test fitting and that way you avoid nasty seams between the two. But it's very reminiscent of the old school where it just plugs in the side. Normal modern kits now, they have that sort of way of being integrated into the wing. Okay, so usual bits and pieces going on the bottom as you can imagine. We've got the actual sway braces which are a nice touch and it's talking about obviously cutting off for different weapons for actually attaching the weapon fits to them. Okay, because we've got the plungers in the down position looks like on all of those. Scoops, antennas, various bits and pieces, obviously refueling probe, wing tips, uh, missile rails, and then the weapons fit itself. So it looks like it is gonna come with very much an assortment. So we've got my Mark 82, your standard sort of slicks. You've got your retarded uh, Mark 84s, uh, uh, GBU 12s, laser guided bombs, uh, AIM-9P uh, and then the AIM-9L, okay, for the Lima and then obviously your configuration just down there, okay. And then we have, actually I must admit I do like these markings, that is quite nice having the markings with a full colour tail like that just makes it very nice from doing it down in there. So as we can see, very nice all the way through with that one. Some nice options on that one. I like the way the um, fuel tanks as well. I've got the, the actual graphics on there as well. Is actually a very nice touch. So the kit itself, first thing it jumps out is rubber wheels, which as we all know, I'm never a fan of particular rubber wheels. 
Okay, but those don't look too bad. They're quite sharp, nicely detailed and everything else like that. Okay, so the kit itself. What we got down here is the main fuselage. Okay, so we can probably just jab this camera down just a little bit. There we go. So first thing that stands out to me is, actually that's some very, very nice detail. Hopefully the cameras can pick up all the different uh, textures and panel lining and everything else in there. But we've got a nice mixture. We've got raised details down here and we've got obviously recessed uh, some nice riveting lines. The slime lines are sunken, which is quite a nice touch, okay, and everything else like that. So they're down in there, all right, and generally working around it. All of it looks really, really nice. It's one of those things, you see it on the box, it doesn't look particularly like a big aircraft. You see it here, it's a big chunky brute, really, okay. Cockpit detail, you know, at the end of the day, it's 148. I'm assuming perhaps the aftermarket guys might jump on this. It'd be very nice to put an Eddard full color set into it. You know, something very simple uh, to mob that one right the way up. But generally, I have to say, we've got nothing on the inside. We have got some obviously locating areas for putting the various bits and pieces in. But I have to say, that is very nice indeed. Weirdly, how we've got things looks like it should be like a waste of sprue, but it's obviously the way they've uh, designed it and all the rest of it. A few of the smaller bits down here, very cleanly molded, no problem at all. Can't see any problems whatsoever. Actually, I must admit, I'm very impressed. That is some nice molding on that. So, we do the bigger sprues first, and then we can drop cameras and that. So down in here, we do have the wings. Okay, so again, looking at the sprues, you can see all the way around it. Nice, clean, no flash, no nothing. Okay, uh, and yeah, I have to say, I don't know how well the camera is actually going to pick that out. Hopefully the camera can see it, we catch it in the, the various lights, but very nice, very, very fine um, detailing on these. And I have to say, this detailing on the wing is probably the finest I've seen Hobby Boss do to date. It is incredibly fine, no problem at all, which is a shame because the recessed detailing on here is uber fine, very much in scale, I should think it's fine, but the vortex generators are huge. It's like these things can't be in scale, surely, because they would be as wide as your hand in real life. Uh, so there's no way they're right. So it could be a case of whipping them out, replacing them with plastic art. When you look on the box art, they are nothing like we've got on here. I don't know this aircraft whatsoever, so it would be interesting to see, but I would imagine it would be easier just to whip them off out of the way, mark where they are, and then replace them with a either, obviously you go down the photo etch route, uh, but some very thin plastic card and just put shims of it in like that uh, and shape them to how you would want them because those look well out. And again, these down here, the activators for the front slats, they just look over scale. They look big and chunky. So in some ways, as I said, kit of two parts, beautiful, the finest detailing I've seen from Hobby Boss to date with all of this recessing, but then the raised bits are huge and massive and chunky. Down here on the inside, we've got no problem with ejector pin marks. They're everywhere, but they are nicely sunken and they're completely out of the way. Okay, but as I said, this front slat business uh, is a bit of a pain, but what's nice is we haven't got ejector pins down on the insides of the slats that you would find typically in Hasegawa kits and things like that. So that is very nice indeed. Again, it's a shame that these scoops don't go a little bit fuller all the way down to take out this leading one. So it looks like they've got, you know, actually our proper scoops. Okay, but that's very nice indeed. And Next up, we've got a match pair. Uh, I assuming they may be doing a two-seater version of this, which would explain the tail and the way the kit is sort of somewhat designed. Um, I imagine, maybe, I don't know, it's just that we've got two uh, ejector seats in the kit, uh, as well as a few other bits and pieces, so I'm just thinking, you know, that perhaps that is the case with those. But as we can see, we have got, it actually is quite a nice seat, I'll give it its due. We've got fuel tanks, um, then we've got the sidewinders down here right the way over and again you can probably see the detail on these you know the pylons as well they're one piece pylons but they're beautifully detailed no problem with those at all um, again the recessing on the fuel tanks is extremely fine very nice indeed but then again you look at these missiles and they are chunky as hell they are big brutish missiles um, and everything else like that. So yeah, okay, you could go down the aftermarket route, let's face it, um, you know, the Brezin weapon sets, things like that, they're very nice these days. And we also have 
a little bit more detail. So down here we've got the actual nozzle for the engine itself. And again, as I say, it's a little bit concerning because some of these parts, they just look overdone. They're not as fine and as detailed as perhaps you would like. Okay, but obviously they're perfectly serviceable. You could easily replace them, things like that. But again, it's just because this finest detail on these, I don't even know if the camera's gonna pick it up, but hopefully you can see those details on, on the wings and everything, extremely fine. That riveting, put a couple of coats of Steinle Res down it, you'll never see it again. Okay, but generally, uh, the instrument panel is quite nice, control grip is quite nice. Some nice details as well on the undercarriage, they are very nice indeed, no problem with that. Compressor blades, okay, fair enough. Uh, and everything else. But yeah, the internals just look a little bit chunky. And I have got little marks on all mine, but they're probably polish out okay. Something a little bit different. Okay, and then, so, down in here we have the intakes, which are full depth intakes. Unfortunately, they're gonna to lead to nowhere, literally. Okay, but again, the wheel hubs are one piece hubs, which is quite nice. So the, the actual rubber ones should fit on there as long as they do fit and there isn't a little bit of slack around them. Okay, but generally one piece gear is all molded. Okay, so a little bit of clean up with that. There's minimal burring between the actual sandwich layers on this one. A little bit of flash on the edges of uh, the actual ejector pins, but not on the parts themselves, which is another nice touch. This guy here obviously had a bit of hard life coming out of the mold. You might be able to see the little white divots and that on it. Um, so just be careful on that. It doesn't come through. The intakes themselves, we've got no detailing whatsoever on the inside. They're just blank on the inside. Okay. Oh, there's a tiny little bit down in there. Okay. But, you know, that's it, it, for its scale, it's fine. But again, it's going to be looking like they're quite big. You're going to look in there and it's just going to be hollow. So it'd be nice to have something in there just to, you know, sort of break it up a bit. The doors themselves, no problem at all. There's no inside detail on the doors, as you can see, uh, but there isn't any ejector pin marks either. Uh, the barrier hook, quite nicely molded, some nice details down on there. We do like on the wheels as well, we've actually got the braking system molded in there as well on the inside. Nicely done, things like that. But again, this nose wheel well, it's got one tiny little line running in it, and that's it. It's like, was it even worth putting that bit in? You know, it's a little bit over the top anyway next up we've got is more weapons so down in here this actually means then you get four lemurs and four uh, papa sidewinders so we've got something for the spare box but again you know actually these are a lot better these uh this is the lemur it's got the different fins on the front and that uh is a lot finer than that papa uh, the P, A9P in there are chunky, they're not very nice at all. This is a lot finer, this is what I'd be looking for, probably a lot more in scale. Actually, to be honest, the uh, GBUs, they look lovely, so do basically the um, retarded uh, Mark 84s uh, and things like that. They are no problem at all. In fact, so we have got down here, this is, what version of the sideline is that? I'm not totally up on mine, but yeah, the ones in the kit you want to avoid. These are a lot nicer on this spread. They're very nice indeed, okay. So, we have got a couple more bits which we've got to look at, but we'll do those afterwards. Let's have a look at the clear part. Beautifully done. I love the way of having the separate box. That's absolutely fantastic. So you've got your, your sprue in, and then it is nicely protected, just like this as well. Although I come along now, make a complete hash trying to get them out as a, a rule, okay. But you can see, I love the way they're packaged. But usually there's a very good reason because like these are beautifully hopefully you can see that that is uber uber clear no problem i love the way this nose one goes on you've got so much clearance all the way around it that you could glue it with normal glue and not run the risk of fogging so that means really you can get in there and sand it it's a blended nose into there so you don't want any steps like you can get away with certain aircraft harriers and things like that they have a little step this one won't so it's nice to have that good amount of clearance and they didn't do the usual and cut it right up to the clear part okay right the way through but those are as we usually find with hobby boss are absolutely fine beautifully clear no problem with that at all as we spoke about in the first bit of the review we've got some great decals which i forgot to look at so we can check those out now because we want to see how they've done the full tail color so this full tail color is white so you're going to prime black or pre-paint black and then stick the white right over the top okay so that's really nice indeed again you know this is a little bit horrible if we're honest they're not exactly nice down there 
In fact, the decal sheet isn't very nice at all. So you're going to be taking those primary markings, but we've got lots of carrier film. It seems quite thick and everything else, but little things like the writing down in here looks absolutely fine, no problem with that at all. Um, I don't know, it just is a little bit, compared to what we've been used to, not exactly the best, shall we say. Okay, this will be your weapons ones and the ones for the fuel tanks and the bits and pieces just like that. And again, you know, pretty good, but we've got lots of carrier film on these for the sidewinders and things like that. So the trouble with that is it's going to sort of, you know, when they wrap round, they don't like sitting and going flush and everything else like that. Again, they're quite thick on these fuel tanks. If you feel it, you know, you might be even worth just painting those in, you know, spraying those in by hand. But again, the writing is quite nice because they cut it all in very tight to those. Okay, but you, I would highly recommend a good gloss coat for using those. Okay, so the photo etch, which won't really bother getting out because it is little tiny ones. So we've got down here little bits for the HUD, rear view mirrors, the harnesses are, you know, mediocre at best, uh, and all the rest of it, so that's not a problem at all. A kit of two halves, again, I seem to be finding this week after week, is that you get, I can pick out real good positives. I have to say this is probably the finest engraving, uh, panel lining, riveting detail uh, and surface detail that I have seen on a Hobby Boss kit to date. In fact, it is easily on a par with anything we've seen with Eddard, uh, like in their Spitfires uh, and things like that they've done recently. It's very fine, very delicate, beautifully done, which is great when you're just doing a great a gray aircraft, say, because when you're just doing a gray aircraft, it's only gonna have one coat of paint and then weathering afterwards. If you were doing something with multiple camos and stuff like that, chances are you're gonna lose it very quickly but the secret of that to be is thin paint thin your paint keep it nice and thin and bring it up gently instead of going down one heavy coat because I think you're going to lose it uh, the downside is the detail is just a little bit lacking the cockpit detail is mediocre at best uh, things like that the decals aren't exactly brilliant okay and things like that so you know as I said you could take the best bits from the kit get set if I don't know if they're available yet of aftermarkets wait for the aftermarket guys to jump on and do an aftermarket cockpit and you'll end up with something absolutely really really fantastic it's a good looking aircraft my only concern as well is this sort of old school butt joint of putting the wings on because obviously you're going to glue it on and then you can have the movement most modern kits now have some type of spar running through so when you put them in they are going to be level this is going to be very much old school I can imagine a saw there with pots underneath jacking the wings up if you haven't got sort of you know a device that's actually going to measure it all and everything else like that so that's a little bit of a, a downside to it as well all right so it's going to be one of those kits that I think if you take a lot of care a lot of dry fitting it should be absolutely perfect but if you don't and you try and rush it you're going to end up with big scenes and joins and wonky wings and everything else like that. So there we go, that's Hobby Boss's 148th scale AMX ground attack aircraft.